Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. I wanted to show you how to make this really easy little flip top donut box. So I've made this using the new Baked Goods stamp set that I have just released. And on the front there you can see it says all you need is love and donuts. And I've heat embossed that on some heat resist acetate. And you can just lift it up and you can see all of the donuts there with their happy little faces on them. It's on a top fold 5x7 card but you can make this on any size that you want. And you can see you've got all your space inside there. I've popped some tissue paper, which I've actually embossed using one of my embossing folders. I'll show you that. You can just tuck the sides of the tissue in, but that will all fit into your envelope. I just think it's really fun, perfect for any person that you know with a sweet tooth or especially a, a donut fan. I think this is the perfect card. So let me show you how to make it. So I have made a donut pop-up box on my channel. So if anybody has these stamps, you could make the pop-up version as well. So I'll link that up here because it's a really, really fun card. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed making that one as well. So just talk you through the bits that I have used. So for the pattern paper here in the background, it's actually taken from one of my older pads and this is from the Twist and Pop collection and it's just the polka dot one here and I just really liked, I thought the colours worked really well and you just get to see you know the odd little polka dots there and that colour worked really well with the pink and it's going to work well with the purple that I'm using for this one. But you do also have the 8x8 pad which has just been released with my shutter card collection and you've got some really nice designs there. I think the sprinkles would work really well or even this kind of striped pattern there as well so you've got a few options. So first of all I've got my 5x7 pre-made card blank. If you want to make your own it's a piece of 10 by 7 score along the 10 inch side at 5 inches and you've got your card blank. I've then got this piece here which is going to be the lid for my little donut box and this is come from the Card Making Magic rectangle dies. I will link them if they're available. I know these ones always seem to sell out very quickly. So um, like I said, follow the link, but any rectangles that you've got, or if you're gonna cut just a rectangle shape yourself, then you'll want something that is about six and a quarter by four. Okay, so that's for my lid. You can see the die there that I've used to cut that one out. I've then taken the so actually for anybody that has those dies, it is the one, two, three, four, the fifth largest for the main one. I've then taken these two here. Okay, so this one, we're only gonna actually cut three sides of it. So again, if you're using a cutting knife and a ruler or just your scissors, it's easy to do. This one is um, five and a half by just over, it's about three and one eighth. And then this one here is where I'm gonna actually have, this will be the aperture in the in the kind of the lid where I'm going to back it with the acetates. So this is four and a half by uh, it's about two and two and three eighths. Yeah. And again, if you want, if you've got this set, you're then looking at the. If I go from the smallest one, two, three, four, the fifth and seventh smallest. <laughs> you can see anyway. Just measure them, and you'll be able to work out what ones you need. So with these two here, first of all. I'm going to lay down this one, pop it down so you get a nice equal border, lay down some tape. Now what you want to do is I'm going to grab my, I use my base plate here because this is wide, wider than my, my big shot. So I'm popping this through my big shot plus, but I'm going to use the smaller plate from my big shot basically you want to partially die cut this so what that means is anything that is between your top plate and your base plate will cut anything you don't want to cut you leave it exposed so I want one of these ends to stay connected to the card so I'm going to lay my plate down right up just to that metal there so I can run that through now but all that, that is going to cut I would suggest you have it straight but all that's going to cut is whatever is between the plates so that strip that is exposed will not cut and it will leave it attached and it's this piece here that I'm talking about. So I'm just going to run that through my machine. Okay, so now when I peel that away, you'll see it's cut the three sides but not this one here. It was just started to, I've got a little bit of the stitching there but that's fine. Have your scoreboard and just match it up to one of your tracks and just join the two ends there. So now I can just fold that back and you'll see we've got our flip lid. But you now want to add your aperture. Now you may decide you don't want to, you could just pop some mats and layers on top of there and you could stamp your sentiment, that will look really nice. But I'm now going to cut this one in 
as well. So I'm just going to grab some more tape and again get that nice and centered. Pop that in there and I'm just going to run that through. Okay, so you can see that's now cut away. So you'll have something like that. Next, you want to add your acetate. Now, you may not want to heat emboss onto it, so you could just use any kind of window sheet or acetate. But I've got the Heat Resist Crafters Companion. You get 15 sheets and I've just taken one of my scrap pieces there. Now because everybody's kind of window is going to be different, all you want to do is lay it down on the back and just pop a little mark where it, where you want to cut, making sure it's just going to cover those, you know, you want it to stick on these four sections of this piece here. So it just wants to fit behind that one there. Okay, so I've cut that out. Now I've already got my all you need is love and donuts in there, so it should if this is a pretty much the same size, it should sit in the middle of that piece there. Now you want to treat this just like you would any other embossing that you're doing, heat embossing. So I'm just going to rub over it with my anti-static powder. You can use corn flour, some of them, some of you might have the brushes. But just get that covered. I always like to put it on my fingers as well, especially if you wear hand creams and things like that. You'd be surprised what it attracts to. Now I am just going to reposition this again just in case I've cut this one slightly different. So I think that's about right. Just pop my magnet down there. Pick that up. Always make sure that you reposition whatever it is back into that corner because they do shift. And then I've just got my Versamark here which is your watermark stamp pad. And then with acetate, you just want to gently lay it down. If you kind of squash the stamp, it's going to kind of like slide on the surface. So I just kind of, you know, push it down enough, but not, not too much. And then you should be able to see if I just, yeah, when I hold mine up to the light, I can see well, that's transferred. There we go. You can just see, there we go. You can just make it out. So that's worked fine. I'm just going to dump some of my white embossing powder over the top. Oh. Just flick it off and because I've covered it really well with the powder you can see there's no specks anywhere else it's just all stuck to the sentiment. So I'm just going to clear that away. Next you want to get your heat gun nice and hot. This will catch very very quickly. It literally takes seconds. It's it's you know it's much much faster than on cardstock. So I'm going to get this warmed up and get that set. Okay, so I'll just give it a second to cool, but can you see now, get that lovely sentiment on your acetate. So you can give it a wipe afterwards, if you've got any sticky marks, things like that you don't like, but that is now ready for me to stick on the back of this. So I've got a thin tape here, I'm waiting for some of my red tape to come in an order, so I'm just going to use this, but you're better off with a double sided tape than with a liquid glue. I'm just going to run that around all four sides. Take away the backing, make sure you've got your sentiment facing along where it's still joined. And then I'm just going to lay this down. Like so. If you've got anything sticky or you're worried there may be, just rub over this side with your powder. Okay and now you see you've got your flip lid. Next I'm going to just take a little piece out of one of the sides. It just gives it a bit more of an authentic look. So I'm just going to pop that in the middle there. You can pop it on that side as well if you want to. Now you'll start to see how it's all coming together. So next I'm going to grab my card blank and then this pattern paper here. Now you may want to do it as a matte layer and have a border, but I'm going to cover the whole piece of this. It almost looks like it's maybe like a tablecloth, like a polka dot tablecloth. So it's up to you, you know, you might have nice wood grain that you could have here. It's so like a nice wooden countertop or something. It's entirely up to you. You might want to have an embossed piece as well. I'm just going to stick that over the top there. And then flip it over and you can just trim the front of 
from the back and you get a nice finish. Okay, so that's ready. Then I've just got some tissue paper here and I've got the 5x7 embossing folder which also comes with the latest release. There's two sheets of the tissue paper here but I'm just going to emboss them. It's just a little, you don't, it's not like in your face but it is there if someone looks closely at the card so I'm just going to run that through. Okay, so now you can see, you get all that lovely detail. Now there are, it's kind of ripped and, you know, all kind of cut through in certain sections but it's tissue paper, it's so thin and delicate you're going to get that but it still does look really nice. Next you want to die cut using the largest one here, another piece in white. Okay, so I've got that piece there and that's going to be the base of my box here. So I've got some of my foam strips, these are just from Amazon, I will link them below. I'm just going to run some foam along the four sides. Okay, and then what I did with the tissue paper is I just separated it so they kind of just kind of offset so they're just a little off, bit offset like that and then I just popped through the back and the front so that the sides were overhanging so you just need to kind of play with it but you want to do something like that or however you decide I mean that's just the way that I'm doing it there and then you're going to trim away these two sections here so I'm just going to kind of pinch that together and then just go in like so so you can see it's kind of hidden behind there and again the idea is is that those bits will stay hidden under the sides and you just have those bits poking out like that then I'm just going to add a blob of glue roughly where each of the donuts would be because obviously you're going to stick the donuts on but all this tissue paper will be free or like loose so just by doing it like that it means that if there's any glue visible it's going to get hidden by the donuts. I'm also going to take my backing off which I almost forgot to do. And then I just had it slightly angled down on the glue there and then with this piece you just want to add your glue inside. I mean you might just choose to use one piece of tissue paper but that way it's all attached but you'll hide all that in a minute when we stick the donuts on top. Okay. What I also did is I just kind of pushed the tissue paper kind of under the sides a little bit just so it just kind of shows the depth of the box a little bit more and then it kind of folds out around like so and then that can just be hidden inside there. Once you get it all in place it, it does look really effective. So again just sliding that all underneath and then you can just fold it back out. There we go. You just see what I've done there. So now you can see where the glue is that's kind of where you want to aim for your donuts. I'm going to do a different arrangement. Let's bring this one back in. Oh, I realised I didn't stick down that. <laughs> the whole point was of having the white is then you sandwiched it in between that. And some of you are probably thinking that. Do you know what? I'm going to leave it in the video. Ideally, you know, you can see the white there. It just finishes off the uh, the bottom. But hey, these things happen. I may, I guess I could stick that. But then you're going to not see the tissue. Let's just leave it. it just shows I'm human. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to be lifting that all up. But I am going to lay these down slightly different. And what I did do, because again, because you've got the foam, is just kind of clip the tops and the bottoms of the donuts just underneath the the frame there okay but yeah ideally before you stick that on there just stick it onto that bit there <laughs> some of you were probably saying as you were watching Sam are you not meant to stick it onto the white bit first but um, never mind so yeah maybe lay down your donuts so you know where you're sticking them because I've done that one I can kind of you know I'm kind of happy with where I need to place these but and I like to angle them all as well so the faces all kind of looking in different directions so I'll do that one up there and I coloured these using alcohol markers and I used my glossy accents on the top half there on the icing just to give it that shine so we'll just have this one facing the other way 
and again you can see how they all fit in just right so let's do there we go we'll do that way so I'm going to get the rest of those stuck down okay so that's them all stuck down there actually doesn't look too bad without the white behind but now when you close it that's how it will be when they take it out of the envelope which I think looks really cool and then with the little bit that's cut out there they're kind of encouraged to lift it up and they can see the donuts and it'd be good if they were real there you have it my little flip lid donut boxes donut cards I think they're super cute really really like these ones can't wait to give these out and I hope you've enjoyed this video as well. It gives you some more ideas on how to use your stamps. As always, I will link everything in the description box below. I'll also link in now the other donut pop-up box because you can, like I said at the beginning, use these stamps in that style. And as always, if you've enjoyed my tutorial today and you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll be back again soon. Bye.